These are my disclosures. We are not related with this topic now. So septic arthritis of the hip is a challenge. It's a challenge both in terms of diagnosis, because it's difficult, can be difficult at the first stage, and the, it's a challenge because of treatment, because it's technically demanding. We can divide two main situations, the sequelae of the childhood infection, which is more deal with the altered anatomy, and on the other side, the active septic arthritis of the adult, we, we have, where we have to manage the infection disease. We have two different scenarios. Let's start with the first one, the sequelae of the childhood. We have anyway a relatively young population, and this is an issue. We have the possibility of a quiescent infection, and this is, all the surgeons are afraid about this because, of course, of the risk of reinfection. We have poor bone stock, we have articular deformities, both coming from the infection, but even coming from previous surgery, some of them can be very bad. But the very difficult <coughs> part of the procedure can be the stiff of the soft tissues. Who has done this type of surgery know how much they can be stiff because of the scar, not only because of the previous surgery, but because of the previous infection. And some of these surgeries can have really made much more difficult the situation. For example, this is an old type of treatment when they lengthen the femur during the young age, and now you have to face a longer, a longer femur. This longer femur needs to be restored in terms of anatomy, but you have to face this type of situation. Factors influencing the outcome are the younger age at the time of infection, if there is a length, length discrepancy with more than two and a half centimeters, if there is a joint fusion, I mean a, a, a spontaneous fusion because of the infection using in tuberculosis, because of the femoral hypoplasia, and in case of severe acetabular dysplasia. These are all factors that can influence negatively the outcome. But be safe in some way, reinfection rate in these cases is very low. This is probably the biggest series published, is 170 total hypotropacy. It is a retrospective analysis. There is no recurrence if the quiescent time is more than 10 years before the total hip surgery. But there was 16% of revision in 10 years because of aseptic loosening and because of osteolysis. Because even the reinfection rate is low, the complication rate can be extremely high. This is 56 consecutive total hypertropacy at 10 years, follow-up, 5 transient nerve palsy, 5 intraoperative fracture, 2 loosening, 1 new infection. So even if their infection rate is low, the complication rate is high. And you can have inferior results when you compare the same situation in case of childhood uh, septic arthritis with versus DDH. In case, for example, of shortening subtrochanteric osteotomy, you can have similar race cases, similar crow type, but the results are much more poor and technically demanding in case of septic arthritis. Less leg length correction, more transfusion at the surgery time, more time for union of the osteotomy, of the shortening osteotomy, lower hair hip score, lower survivorship, and more reoperation in the group after septic arthritis. This is a case, a female, 51 years old, a standard total hip on one side. On the other side, a cementless with high porosity cap, conical modular stem, and this is the two years follow-up. Different situation we mentioned is the active septic arthritis of the adult. It can be young, many times it's not a young patient. You can find this mainly in diabetes, in HIV patient, drug and alcohol abusers. Staphylococcus is the most common microorganism, is responsible from 70 to 80 percent of these infections, and the diagnosis can be again a challenge. We have three situations here. One of them is infected. Which one do you think is? How many is for number one? Please raise up your hand. Only one. How many for number two? How many for number three? I can say that the majority was correct. It's number two. The other two are rapidly disruptive uh, osteoarthritis of the hip, 
but they are not infected. Number two was infected. So you need to rule out in these cases an infection with the ESR and CRP. I can tell you that this is part of our routine in all the total joint replacement. You can have a neighbor culture because sometimes this patient can have some peak of fever. But joint aspiration that you have to do may be negative because many times these patients are under antibiotic therapy, so you can have some false negative. For sure, MRI can help because of fluid collation and abscess abscess recognition, and CT scan is helpful when you want to know what is really the bone defect in order to reconstruct it for the surgery. Factors influencing the acute infection of the joint is a delayed diagnosis beyond the three weeks, which is a strong predictor for sacrifice the joint. So be careful with this, it, that the immediate diagnosis is very important when you suspect an infection. The host type, of course, and if you have any polymicrobial infection, I'm speaking about acute, usually hematogenous infection, but now we see more with this intraarticular injection, with all this uh, 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 hyaluronic acid done everywhere, and the number of infections can increase because of this. Functional outcome of resectional tropathy is very poor, especially in these cases. It can be considered several procedure, but both the functional and the uh, uh, clinical results are very poor. Two-stage procedure with an antibiotic loaded cement special show better functional results, pros can help the control of the infection can help and can do an easier surgery after that. But again, their infection rate is high in this cohort of patients. This paper presents a high rate of mortality. Probably they are facing with fragile patients with comorbidities. But repeated surgery may be necessary. 87% infection control with the first spacer, 100% after two spaces. So you must be ready to go for more than one surgery. Risk for failure, that means reinfection with the second stage are old age, high preoperative CRP, and resistant organism profile. Some cases from our series, this is a strepsosanguinis in a young man. So be careful, this was 34. He was a post-drug addict. He's not more a drug addict, but he was. We did a preformed spacer, vanco and gentamicin, three months time interval, negative CRP and SR, and this is the second stage. Another case, staph aureus, 63-year-old male, diabetes, arteriopathy, preformed spacer with gentamicin, four months late time interval, CRP negative, ESR negative, second stage with a cementalis implant. Staph aureus, preformed spacer, again, gentamicin, three months later, time interval, negative CRP and SR, and again, we go with this. And it was a 56 males with no comorbidities at all. The pre another case, 52 years old male, unexplained fever, no other risk factors, staph aureus, preformed spacer, genta and vancomycin, three months time interval, negative CRP, and this is the second stage. Can we go for a total hip one stage? Can we do this in these cases? If the infection is reasonably healed, if there is the possibility of targeted therapy because you identify as you do in a second stage in case of PJI, when you have a prolonged antibiotic therapy at least until interoperative culture results, and possibly with antibiotic local delivery, it can be cemented, antibiotic loaded, or some coatings on the implant. And this is the case. This is the case that we did in one side on two stage. On the other one, we did in one, because in the meantime, there was a longer time at the reasonable suspect that it was healed. So CRP was negative, ESR was negative, and it was a cementless, same implant, coated with a, an antibiotic gel with gentamicin. In conclusion, main issue in sequelae are the anatomical deformities, the soft tissue stiffness caused by the initial infection, and recurrence is a common of course, you have to rule out, but it's quite uncommon. Main issue in active uh, 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 septic arthritis of the adult is a challenging situation in high-risk patients. Two-stage revision with antibiotic spacing is a valid option with better clinical outcome compared to resection and easier second surgery. Recurrence must be considered and more than one surgery 
must be considered for this patient. And again, I invite all of you to the meeting of the European Hip Society in Lille, which is 1 to October 2020. Thank you very much for your attention.